God, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise your name. We give you all the glory, all the honor. We thank you for this time of fellowship and communion with you. Lord, I ask you that you just give me your words to speak. Give me your words. Give me your thoughts. And give me your message. I just pray that it be you speaking through me. Let your word have free course. Give me what to say. Hey, I pray that it be the Holy Ghost speaking to me and speaking through me. I submit myself unto you. And may your words be spoken. I pray you confirm the word with signs following and demonstration of the Spirit. And Lord, we just praise you. We thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hey, it's, it's real out here. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I praise God. I thank God. He done, He gave me a few things to speak about. You know, I really didn't plan on, well, it don't really matter. I, I'm just, I just opened myself up for the Lord to use me whenever, however. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, I, just, I just praise God, man. You know what I'm saying? But the most, the most valuable, the most powerful thing is intimacy with God. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the season I'm in right now, I could be preaching every day. You know what I'm saying? Going on the YouTube, on the Facebook. You know what I'm saying? I could be making videos and preaching every day. I could be doing songs. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Every day. You know what I'm saying? But the most powerful thing is personal time with God, intimacy with God. You know what I'm saying? Time in the Word, time in prayer. You know what I'm saying? Just spending time with God because, you know what I'm saying? Your anointing comes from that. You know what I'm saying? Your anointing comes from that. Your revelation comes from that. Your ministry is birthed out of your intimacy with God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? I could be doing, and, and, and I, I try to move according to the word of God when I feel like he got something, he done shown me something or he done put something in my spirit that he wants me, you know what I'm saying, to preach or to teach or to, maybe I need to put this in a song, you know what I'm saying? I just try to keep myself open to God and just let him use me however he want to use me, but it's not about just preaching every day, teaching every day, doing music every day. It's about intimacy with God. And out of your intimacy with God comes your directions. You know what I'm saying? When to preach, when to teach. And I'm talking about my personal ministry. It's different if you like a pastor of a church or something, then, you know what I'm saying? When y'all have them services, you know it's time to, time to, you know what I'm saying, get busy, time to do your ministry. You know what I'm saying? But instead of me, just trying to do stuff every day. I just be seeking the Lord, man. And then he kind of prick me. He kind of prompt me when he'd have me to preach, teach, etc. You know what I'm saying? I try to just move according, you know what I'm saying, to the leading of God. You know what I'm saying? I uh You know what I'm saying? I got a got a few notes, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Got 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 some notes. You know what I'm saying? Then sometimes, you know what I'm saying? I got a couple subjects right here. Hold up, where is it? Yeah, su subjects right there. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I don't really just do notes. Sometimes I just kind of write subjects, you know what I'm saying, and let God fill it in. But then, a minute ago, you know what I'm saying, God was giving me something a little bit more exhaustive, you know what I'm saying, with the exact scriptures and points. You know what I'm saying? So so we'll see how that work out, you know what I'm saying? Because another thing, what I was going to say, you know what I'm saying, that's really, that's two different anointings. You know what I'm saying? When you when you preparing a sermon and God then gave you a thought or or idea and you preparing the sermon, you know what I'm saying? You write you writing your notes out or whatever, and God is giving you different thoughts, He giving you different ideas, He bringing scriptures to your remembrance, you know what I'm saying, to prepare a sermon, that's one anointing. And then to actually preach the sermon, that's a whole nother anointing. You know what I'm saying? Like or I ain't going to say a different anointing, but that's two different moves of the Spirit. That's one move of the Spirit when you preparing the, the when you preparing the sermon and the anointing is on you. You know what I'm saying? And different thoughts coming to your mind. He opening up revelation and stuff while you prepare the sermon. But then when you actually preach the sermon, that's a different move of the Spirit. And that's why sometimes you might, you know what I'm saying, you might get to preaching and God take the sermon way this way or he take it way over that way. 
and he brings stuff to you that wasn't even in your notes, you might only get to preach about three or four lines off your notes, and then you done took off. You know what I'm saying? That's because it's a separate move of the Spirit. Now, he can take you through your notes, but he can take you somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, a, that's two different moves of the Spirit. It's kind of like freestyling and writing. You know what I'm saying? If, if you write a song and you rap it, you know what I'm saying? That's one thing. But then to freestyle, you know what I'm saying? That's something else. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Just, just little things, man. I'm finna give you some of these subjects God gave me. I already talked about the first one. Intimacy more than ministry. You know what I'm saying? Intimacy matters more than ministry. Your, min your intimacy with God is number one. Your ministry is number two. You don't don't get it the other way around. You know what I'm saying? That that's how people get in trouble. Then you be ministering. You know what I'm saying? But you had you don't have no. You know what I'm saying? Your strength. See when you minister, the anointing comes upon you for that moment and empowers you, right? But your personal intimacy, that's where you get the strength to live life. You know what I'm saying? That's why Paul said, "I don't want to preach and then be a castaway." You know what I'm saying? You, you, you can do ministry and you get empowered, you know what I'm saying, as you minister. But then after it's over with, you know what I'm saying, and you living your life and you ain't on the stage, you ain't in the pulpit, you know what I'm saying, you living your life, you mess around and fall weak to temptation or fall weak to something else because your strength, the, the, the strength to live this life, it really comes from intimacy. See, you can be on stage and be empowered. In front of the people, but then after the stage, you know what I'm saying, at, at night, in the morning, you know what I'm saying, when it's you by yourself, you know what I'm saying, and temptation trying to whisper in your ear, you know what I'm saying, temptation trying to present itself, in, but before your eyes and in your mind, you know what I'm saying, you, you can fall victim to sin and victim to the to the schemes of the devil if you don't have that power in you to live this life, and that comes from intimacy, it's always intimacy first and ministry second. Then something else I want to say, you know, when people talk about uh, false whatever, it ain't just, it could be false apostles, false prophets, anything fivefold ministry, false teachers, preachers, pastors, you know what I'm saying? What make a person false? See, a lot of people think it's about the accuracy. Now, you know what I'm saying? If you a prophet or whatever, then your words... God should confirm the word. I'm just going to put it like that. You know what I'm saying? If you prophesying this and that, then, you know what I'm saying, you you you, you should be right, you know what I'm saying, most of the time. But but I'm going to say this, you know, what, what really make a person false is their motives. You know what I'm saying? What make a person false is their motives. It's not necessarily that they don't have the gift, but it's their motives with the gift. It's not for the edification of the church. It's not in love. It's not to please God. You know what I'm saying? What make a person false prophet, teacher, preacher. See, people get caught up in the gifts. You know what I'm saying? But if, if you the real deal, then the gifts should be accurate too. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? But if somebody miss a prophecy or something, you know what I'm saying? They, they want to be so quick to call them false. But really what makes somebody false is their motives. You know what I'm saying? They doing it for the money or they, they doing it for impure reasons. You know what I'm saying? They, they doing it out of envy and strife. They doing it out of greed, filthy lucre. They doing it for the money. You know what I'm saying? They doing it for the crowd rather than doing it for God. You know what I'm saying? They not, they, they motive is not souls coming into the kingdom of God and, and souls being stabilized and strengthened and rooted and grounded in Christ and making their calling and election sure. You know what I'm saying? They reasons are not pure in the sight of God. That's what makes one false. You know what I'm saying? Then the Old Testament, it said if a prophet prophesies something and it don't happen, you know what I'm saying? That make him a false prophet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it's, it said that, in, I, I want to say Deuteronomy, I want to say 13, maybe 18. You know what I'm saying? It might be 13, might be 18. Matter of fact, I think it was 18. He was saying, you don't fear that prophet. If they prophesy something and it don't happen, then you, you don't, you know what I'm saying, you don't be scared of that prophet. You know what I'm saying? That prophet ain't, ain't got nothing. But then on the on the other end, though, I think Deuteronomy 13, he said if somebody have a dream or, or some kind of encounter, or if, if they got some kind of gift and they and they give a sign and it and it comes to pass, if they say they done had a dream or something like that and it come to pass. 
he, he says still though that don't mean it's of God because if they trying to they might have a genuine gift but if they trying to lead you astray if they trying to lead you some other kind of way to follow false gods he said hey you don't mess with them either you know what I'm saying so it, it's not only the gift but it's also the motives you know what I'm saying it's also the motives you know what I'm saying you you got to be real and then another thing see prophecy though you know what I'm saying? A lot of time, prophecy can be, I ain't going to say uh, prophecy, it can change. You know what I'm saying? Because Jeremiah 18, he's saying, if I speak a word, you know what I'm saying? If if, if you prophesying, the ju and I'm not talking about America, because America as a whole is not going to repent. So I'm not going to take back none of the prophetic words that I done gave. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to defend myself. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Jeremiah 18, he said God could prophesy judgment against a person or a nation. But if that person repent, then then the judgment can be called off. You know what I'm saying? And same thing, God could say if somebody's going the right way, they living for God, and God say, hey, I'm finna bless this person, and he send the prophetic word, hey, you finna, you finna step into your season. You finna step into showers of blessings. You know what I'm saying? You've been faithful. But if that person was to turn the wrong way and, and start living in sin and turn away from God, all that good that was prophesied about that person, all that can be canceled out and not come to pass. You know what I'm saying? So prophecy, some some of it can be influenced by the people. Then when Jonah said, you know, God going to destroy this city, you know what I'm saying? And what he say, 40 days, he going to destroy Nineveh. But then the people repented and then the judgment was called off. You know what I'm saying? So. And it's the same way with America. Judgment is coming, but if the whole, you know what I'm saying, if the whole nation were to repent, and not, not necessarily even the whole nation, but if if like mass repentance was to come to this nation, you know what I'm saying, God's judgment could be held back for, for longer. Matter of fact, it's people praying right now why the judgment ain't already came. You know what I'm saying, just because of the, the, the righteous ones in the nation that's praying, that's why the judgment hadn't came already. But it is going to come. To, you know what I'm saying? America as a nation is not going to repent. Like from the leaders, you know what I'm saying? A, a large amount of people among the leadership and then a large amount of just the common people were to repent. The judgment of God could be turned around. It could be shut down. But that's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? The, the, America is too, is too rooted into the world. The world... And the devil, you know what I'm saying, just got too strong of a grip. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? I you know what I'm saying? I, I believe in the I believe it's some individuals who are gonna come to repentance. I believe it's some individuals that's gonna uh you know see the light and, and repent and get their life to Jesus and turn from their sin. And a lot of people who already know Jesus. You know what I'm saying? They, and they've been kind of playing with this thing and they hadn't been living for God wholeheartedly. I believe it's individuals that's going to come to repentance and get right with God. But as far as large groups, large masses, a mass repentance, a, a, a mass amount of people, a, a large group of people within the nation coming to repentance, I, I just don't see it happening. I'm not going to say it's impossible, you know what I'm saying, but... I, I can't see it happening. And then another thing, um, you know, the, the, the people who always want to prophesy good, them the ones you got to watch. You know what I'm saying? If, if it's a sinful nation and we done turned on God and we go in the direction, I'm talking about as a nation that we going in, the ones who want to prophesy good, them the ones you got to watch. Jeremiah chapter, chapter 28, you know what I'm saying? It, you know, Israel had been judged. You know what I'm saying? And they went captive in the in the uh ba Babylon or or the Babylon had a had a yoke on them or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But now nah, yeah, that yeah, that yeah. A portion of the uh Israelites had been taken captive. You know what I'm saying? And, and they was being chastened by God. You know what I'm saying? And the chastening was not over yet. The the chastening was set. Uh, it might have been 70 years, but the, the chastening was set, the judgment was set. It was going to last the captivity for a certain amount of time. And then then you had a, a, a guy, you know what I'm saying? He wanted to try to say, hey, you know what I'm saying? The judgment finna be over with. I'm paraphrasing. You know what I'm saying? God finna take this 
t- take the yoke of this nation from off y'all and y'all finna be set free. You know, he prophesying good news. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But but that wasn't the case. And, and then God had the real prophet to tell him, you know what I'm saying? Hey, matter of fact, you 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 teaching rebellion. And, and, and God going to take you off the face of the earth. <laughs> you know, you're going to die. You know what I'm saying? And and that was uh, Jeremiah chapter 28. But 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 what I'm saying, and then Jeremiah was saying, hey, all the prophets, you know what I'm saying, the, the people is a rebellious people. So most of the prophets that are called of God were called to turn the people back. To God, you know what I'm saying. So they prophesied of judgment and wrath and woe and lamentation. They prophesied bad things because the people had turned from God in a bad direction, and that's what they was headed to. Bad things. So the prophets prophesied of bad things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But they were true prophets. And then the ones who trying to prophesy all this good, trying to prophesy of peace and all this. Them was the ones that were the false prophets. You know what I'm saying? So every everybody, I, I, as a matter of fact, I, uh, earlier before, a minute ago, you know what I'm saying, God, God brought something to my remembrance. When I was living in Dallas, you know what I'm saying, and this is after I, you know, got good with the Lord. I wasn't dibbling and dabbling in the world no more. I was, I was steady with the Lord. But I had a job, and um, I worked with a guy from North Dallas. And I don't know if y'all know the rapper, but the rapper name is is Mr. Lucci. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the guy that I worked in, they they were both from North Dallas, uh, L- Lake Highlands, and all that. You know what I'm saying? They went to Lake Highlands, I guess, high school together. And and uh, the guy that I worked with, you know what I'm saying? He said that uh, I get I don't know if they was in the service together, but somebody had prophesied to Mr. Lucci. About and and he was this this one he he was already doing his thing as a musician and whatnot you know what I'm saying but a lady had prophesied to him familiar spirit you know what I'm saying because I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why why I think so you know what I'm saying but uh, she was prophesying to him about uh, and you know he's a worldly rapper you know what I'm saying not 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 living for God not I'm talking about then I don't know what he's doing now but at that point in time he wasn't living for God and he wasn't rapping for God. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the lady had prophesied to him. I don't know if my home, if, if, if the dude I worked with was in the service with him or if Lucci told him about it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, the, the lady had told him. She prophesied good things over him. Like, oh, yeah, God is going to bless your music career and, and all this. You know what I'm saying? God God going to, you know, raise you up even more. He going to bless your, you know, music and, you know what I'm saying, bless your music career and all that. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think that was of God because, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying God don't love you when you in sin or nothing like that because God does love you. But if God was going to speak to a person, the main thing God is concerned with is that person repent. God is not going to encourage you to continue the way you're going if you're not going in a way that's pleasing unto God. You know what I'm saying? So, And I'm going to tell you like this. All you people who, who not living right, if y'all go to church and somebody prophesying all these blessings and good things about you and they don't encourage you to turn from your sin and get right with God, they probably a false prophet. You know what I'm saying? Because if God was going to speak to a person, the main thing God is trying to deal with that person about is to turn from their wicked ways and get right with God. Because when you out there living your own life and you not thinking about God and you dishonoring God and you living the way you want to live and ain't really concerned about God, you are in hell. You in danger of hell fire. And that's how God looking at it. He looking at it in view of eternal consequences. So the main thing that God wants to say to the sinner is, I love you, but I need you to repent. I need you to turn from your own ways. Give your heart, give your life to me so that I might give you eternal life. So that I might have a right relationship. You know what I'm saying? That's what God is saying to the sinner. Not keep on doing what you're doing. You you, you know, I want to bless you even more. Even though you're not living for me. Even though you're sinning against me. You're living in sin. I just want to bless you even more. And ain't said nothing about repentance. That's a false prophet telling the people what they want to hear. See, the same spirit that psychics and tarot card readers operate under. See, somebody can pick up something about you. 
You know what I'm saying? But but what direction are they trying to point you in? See, just because somebody can, you know what I'm saying, get a get a reading about you in the spirit realm and, and, and they can see some things about you and, and, and they can, you know what I'm saying, tell you some things about yourself. If they not trying to point you towards Christ, it's not of God. Cause there's some other forces that can that can do that, you know what I'm saying? But a, a real man of God, woman of God, prophet of God, you know what I'm saying? Is gonna try to point you to Christ, cause that's the main thing. You know what I'm saying? That's the main thing. And then another thing, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, I'm not making excuses for people who miss their prophecies or nothing, because you know you you gotta weigh that thing. But see, the thing about the Old Testament, and, and then another thing, you know what I'm saying? A lot of them Old Testament prophets, they prophesied stuff that didn't even happen in their lifetime. So you like, well, that prophecy didn't come to pass. Well, he prophesied something that was 400 years later. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, but like I said, that's how you tell the real and the fake. Are you pointing people towards God? That's how you knew. Isaiah prophesied the, the virgin going to have a, going to have a, the virgin going to, uh, have a child. You know what I'm saying? That didn't happen in his lifetime. You know what I'm saying? So you can't judge all prophecies because some prophecies are for a long time away. But if when, when you can't judge the prophecy, you have to look at the motives. Even if the prophecy is right, you still got to look at the motives. Balaam prophesied accurately. He had the real word of the Lord. But his motives, he had sold out. He wanted that honor. That the prince, uh, uh, who, who was it? Was it Balak? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, I get it mixed up. Moab and Midian. I get it mixed up, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I know it was Balak. You know what I'm saying? He, he wanted he wanted the riches and the honor. You know what I'm saying? I want to say that the, the, the king of Moab, you know what I'm saying, had offered him. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what he wanted. You know what I'm saying? But he had the real word of the Lord. And, he, and the thing is, God showed me he wasn't even a Jew. You know what I'm saying? But but he had he had that relationship with God. He was able to hear from God. He knew God, even though he wasn't a Jew. <clears throat> he would he, he was separated. He, he wasn't of Israelite descent, but he had a relationship with God. God had revealed himself to him. But then he wanted the riches and the honor and, and, the, and the promotion, you know, from the king of of, of, of the Moab Moabites, Balak, I think. Numbers what? 22, 23, 24. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, hey, this thing is real. And like I said, a lot of them prophecies, the people couldn't judge all their prophecies because some of their prophecies was far off. But what was their motives? To turn the people back to God. That's the motive of any person of God, not just prophet. Anything, you're trying to turn people to Christ. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to turn people to Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And this is just the intro, man. This one right here might turn out to be a long one. You know what I'm saying? Then I was going to talk about a job and ministry. Hey, I just want to say it's real, man. You can be called to the ministry, man. God can take you through a season, man, where he call you off the job. He can take you through a season where he call you off the job. And you can't get another job, but you call to the ministry. And then there's also people that got good jobs and they in the ministry, but they not called to the ministry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This, this thing is real, man. You know what I'm saying? But hey, you got to be in love with Jesus, man. That's what's going to take you through the test. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you can feel like somebody else is in my spot. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? That's your test. You know what I'm saying? You can't get out of line. You got to stay in love. You can't get bitter. You know what I'm saying? You can't You can't get envious. You can't get covetous. You got to keep your heart right. You got to keep your heart clean. You know what I'm saying? And God can have such a strong calling on your life. Like I said, he wants you. It, it could come a point where it's your time to go. It's your time to step into what God has called you to. And he done shut all the other doors. And you called to the ministry. 
and your heart and your life is right with God. And you don't have no ulterior motives. And you can't get a job. And he got all the other doors shut. The only door open is the door of the thing that you called to do. <laughs> and that's your test. And it seemed like it seemed like somebody else in your spot. You know what I'm saying? You feel like you called to do it. You feel like you could do it better. And I ain't talking about in your own strength, but you know what I'm saying? You feel like that's your calling and you know God is with you. And then it seemed like somebody else is in that place and they don't even take it serious like you take it serious. And, and, and they not even called to it like you called to it. That's your test. Keep your heart right. Keep your heart clean. Don't let the devil in. You know what I'm saying? You love everybody. That, that's the main thing. You know what I'm saying? Think about Joseph. When he was in that prison. What his own family did to him. You know what I'm saying? He ain't did nobody wrong. He honored God. Even when he, you know what I'm saying? He could have slept with that man's wife, but he said, I'm not going to sin against God. It wasn't just about, oh, I don't want to sin against my master. But first, he said, I can't commit this sin against God. You know what I'm saying? Did nothing. You know what I'm saying? Carried himself the way he was supposed to. Did right. But he had to be tested. You know what I'm saying? It, it said the word of the Lord tried him. I, what was it? Uh, Psalm 106. It might be Psalm 106, 19. You know what I'm saying? It, it said uh, until the time came, <laughs> the word of the Lord tried him. You know what I'm saying? It, it, that's your test though. See, you, you got people flunking their tests. And I really, and I'm, I'm going to go on and say this, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that guy Earl Carter, man, you know what I'm saying? Hey, people can talk that thing, man, but you got to live that thing. Because check this out, you know what I'm saying? Y'all already know the, the situation. He done called the feds on this man, talking about he a child molester and all that. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, Blake, he ain't perfect. He done compromised. He he about that money. He ain't, he ain't preaching against sin. He ain't about souls. You know what I'm saying? He got that compromised gospel. So I'm not taking up for him, but like I say, I always say it. Two wrongs don't make a right, man. They, you know what I'm saying? This man done took it further than what it is. The Bible call it, you add drunkenness to thirst. You you add, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You add grief to sorrow. You know what I'm saying? You add an insult to injury. Because check this, he done called the feds on the man talking about he a, a child molester because like you, I mean, you know what I'm saying? That, that's that's serious. Like, but he he's in the gall of bitterness, Earl Carter. He in the gall of bitterness and the bond of iniquity. You know what I'm saying? You you don't you don't take it. You know you don't do that. You know what I'm saying? You don't do that. You know what I'm saying? You you got to pass your test. And uh, you know he he called a feds on the man talking about he a child molester and all this kind of stuff. But hey. If, if he a child molester, why ain't he in jail? If they investigating it, why ain't he in jail? You know what I'm saying? It's one thing if you molesting kids or, or something and it's in the dark. You know what I'm saying? But once it's out there, once it's out there in the open, don't all them child molesters be going to jail? You know what I'm saying? It, it be in the secret. But then once it come out in the open, then, you know what I'm saying? The secret get out. Then one person come forward. Then another person come, like Jerry. <laughs> Hey, hey, it ain't funny though, man, but uh, like Jerry Sandusky, like all them Catholic priests, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Once one person come forward, a whole bunch of other folks come forward, and they done. You know what I'm saying? It's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Because I had a feeling he might have been lying. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but yeah, anyway, you know what I'm saying? So he done called the feds and they investigating it. But then all of a sudden, won't none of the witnesses come forward and they can't find the witness. And, and you done ran with some he say, she say. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, it's revenge. That, that's what it come down to, it's revenge. But see, you, you, can't, you can't live by revenge. You know what I'm saying? If you really serious about Christ, you don't do that. And then people can still preach and quote scriptures and, 
and, and talk real good. But I'm telling you, man, a lot of people, man, that this is how people end up in hell. You know what I'm saying? And 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 all you know what I'm saying, they look good in front of the people. They talk like they saved, but then when they test come, it shows you what's really in them. It shows you what really matters to them. See, that man is more concerned with revenge than he is living for Jesus, keeping his heart clean, keeping his life clean. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Blake did him wrong. You know what I'm saying? But hey, you got to leave it in God's hands. You got to forgive that man. Let that man go. Let God deal with that man. And, and then it's it's one thing if he was just exposing them for the real stuff that he did. But then you you bringing extra lies and stuff into it, slandering somebody. Both of y'all wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A, a, a real prophet ain't going to take no sides. A real prophet going to take sides with Jesus and the word of God. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I just wanted to say that because I thought that was real. I just, uh, I didn't agree with that at all, man. It's one thing when you calling somebody out and exposing them for what they really did wrong. But then that's just bitterness and re revenge. And, you know, when you bringing in lies and then you done got the police in it. And then, and then they can't prove it. And then, like I said, child molestation, that right there so serious, man. Ain't no amount of money going to keep somebody from coming forward. You ain't got that much money. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, they might come forward to get money from the person. And you ain't going to have enough money to keep the witnesses quiet if you done molested them or you done molested their kids. You ain't got enough money to keep the witness quiet. Michael Jackson and all them, and I don't think Michael was guilty either. I think he would just, you know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? He would just, he would just, ain't no other way to say it. He was just like, a, he was a weirdo. You know what I'm saying? He he didn't have no childhood. He was messed up. You know what I'm saying? He was like, he he was like, like, like on some weird stuff, but I don't think it was, but I'm saying, that's just my opinion. I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, you, you see what happened to these child molesters, though. One person come forward, and then a whole bunch of folks come forward, and, and, and you know what I'm saying? So you can't say, oh, he got the, he got the money to uh, hush the witnesses now. You know what I'm saying? What parent, you know, you done molested their kid, any amount of money going to keep them from <laughs> doing whatever they want to do to you, if it's killing you or if it's taking it to, to the law. Ain't no money going to stop them from doing that. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there. You know what I'm saying? And then, and yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to throw that in there, man. And then another thing I want to say, man, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? On these jobs, man, you know, let, let your light shine. But um, you got to, I don't know, man. I, I just, hey, th this is really what came to me. I, I'm trying to introduce it in a smooth kind of way. But I just had this thought, man. You know what I'm saying? People say they Christians and they really sold out to God and all this. But if you had a manager, if you had a boss that was, say, a, a homosexual or say they was uh, living in a relationship like like your boss uh, had a girlfriend or a boyfriend. I, I'm, and it could be heterosexual, but say they was living in a relationship and they, they living with they, you know what I'm saying, significant other and they not married. You know what I'm saying? If you know what I'm saying, if they was to start talking about God or, or, or something like that, you know what I'm saying? If they was like, hey, you know, God loves me, I'm okay with God, right? Would you really tell them? I'm talking about your boss, I'm talking about your manager, I'm talking about your supervisor. Would you be like, would you tell them the truth if they was like, hey, I'm alright with God, aren't I? God loves me too, doesn't he? You know what I'm saying? Would you just go along with it like, yeah, he loves you? Or, or would you really tell him the gospel? You know what I'm saying? Because on, on, when it comes to the job, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to go in there trying to preach to everybody. You know what I'm saying? You, you don't have to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm finna get into some stuff. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to go in there trying to preach to everybody. You know what I'm saying? You ought to let your light shine. You know what I'm saying? But if, if you get the chance, you know what I'm saying, to tell somebody about Christ, you ought to do it. You know what I'm saying? You ought to do it. And but 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 it seems like a lot of Christians be scared, you know. You know, they they talk Christ when they're around Christians. And when it comes to some church type stuff, 
See, a lot of Christians compromising on the job. And this is just the thought God gave me. You know what I'm saying? If your manager or somebody is living in sin, yeah, and I'll just use that as an example. It could be any kind of sin, but either way, they flat out living in sin. I ain't, and I ain't talking, I'm talking about they might be good people. You might even be friends. You might get along with them well. But truth is, they living in sin, right? So they, they come to you. They, they ask you about God. Or God come up in the conversation and they think they okay with God. Would you, I'm talking about your boss, I'm talking about your, your man, I'm talking about somebody who in authority over you on the job. Would you straighten that thing out with them and really let them know what God requires? Or would you just kind of go along with them? Or would you just kind of tell them what they want to hear? Or would you just kind of say something about God, but but do it in, in a way that you make sure that, that they not offended, even if that means not telling them the truth? Would you hide the truth from them because you don't want them to be offended? Would you tell them the truth about God and what he really requires? Be like, oh, I mean, hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I, I'm okay. God, God, God loves me too, doesn't he? I'm all right with God. Would you tell them, hey, hey, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, God loves you, you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You you have to put your faith in Jesus, man. Like, and I ain't, I, I ain't just talking about believing. I'm talking about like you, you really got to make a commitment of your life to Jesus. See? You put your faith in Jesus that he died and, and, and rose from the dead. You know what I'm saying? But he's calling you to live for him. You know what I'm saying? He's calling you to make a total commitment of your life to him. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and the things that's in your life that don't please God, you got to turn away from those. You, you can't just continue and say, I'm okay. You, 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 you really got to make a change. In the name of God, in the name of Jesus, but he'll help you to make that change. But you do have to make that change. You can't you can't have God on one side and then still live the, the way you want to live on the other side. You got to line your life up with the life that God has called you to live. You know what I'm saying? And, and you can do it in your own way, but would you really set them straight, though? I'm talking about your manager. I'm talking about somebody in authority. Would you tell them the truth? Or would you just go along with it and, and you don't want them to be offended because you think you might, you know, lose your job or something? And like I said, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just asking a question. And like I said, I'm not talking about just trying to go in and preach to somebody. I'm talking about if the opportunity presented itself. See, people need to check their heart. It, it's easy to talk like you so surrendered to God. Matter of fact, me, I was so raw on the job. It's like if I'm in a situation, I'm going to tell you about this dream I had, you know what I'm saying, before I came off my, my last job. I'll show you how real it is. But, um, you know what I'm saying, it, it, that, that's like if I'm on the job, man. If, if I know somebody's being influenced by the devil, you know what I'm saying, I'm not going to be arguing with you in the natural. I'm going to start casting the devil out, pleading the blood. Because I know the devil is behind it. If I know it's if I if I know it's spiritual, why would I try to deal with it in the natural? If I know it's spiritual and I know it's some the, the devil is the root of the conflict, why would I try to deal with it in the natural? I don't care about being dignified and politically correct. I'm gonna call on the name of Jesus, I'm gonna plead the blood, I'm gonna cast the devil out. And see, they didn't understand me on the job. Even Christians trying to trying to get me to to, to simmer down. <laughs> they was like, "Oh, you 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 just got to make sure you pray before you come to work." Oh, I already did that. So you don't know the prayer and the intimacy with God before I come to work. That's the reason for the warfare. <laughs> they was like, "Well, you just need to you just need need to pray a little bit more now." No, no, no. I've already prayed. It's not time for prayer. I know this is spiritual war, so I'm going to deal with it with spiritual weapons, which is the sword of the spirit. See, they didn't understand me on the job. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and persecution broke out. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, it's, it's, it's real, man. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm not trying to get people to lose their job or, 
Don't nobody have to lose their job or go crazy for Jesus to show that you a real winner. <laughs> I ain't talking about that. I'm just saying, though, if you was put in that position, you know what I'm saying, just make sure that Jesus is number one. Don't compromise the word of God for your job. You know what I'm saying? If they trying to get you to compromise, if they trying to get you to be in a corner with this thing, you know what I'm saying? Them worldly people let you know what they do. They let you know what they're about. You try to push that, that line on me, I'm going to let you know what I'm about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it was some more stuff in my spirit. <laughs> I'm trying to get to it, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's real though, man. You know what I'm saying? So, oh yeah, I had this dream though, man. On my, on my job, man, I was going through all kind of stuff. And the warfare didn't really break out till after I gave my life back to God. You know what I'm saying? But I had this dream, man. And, uh, you know, so I used to work at the mall. But I had this dream. The first part of the dream, I was like, I was in the mall and I was preaching in the mall. And the, and the dream came to pass. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the second part of the dream, you know what I'm saying, it, it's hard to explain it, but it's like I was being watched like from all around, you know what I'm saying? But the reason I was being watched, it's like was because of the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I was being watched because of the name of Jesus. And then like they was like they was watching me around me from a distance. But then as time went on, like I was cont I continued to use the name of Jesus. So these people was watching me from a distance, but then that they started coming in closer and closer. You know what I'm saying? But they was watching me and then like I kept using the name of Jesus like not all the time, but like I was using the name of Jesus like periodically, right? So I continued to use his name like periodically, you know what I'm saying? And then like they was watching me, but then it's like they was getting closer and closer. Like what they what they watching me? It's it's hard to explain, man. You know what I'm saying? But then it it, it went to another scene in the dream where like I was walking and it's like it's like I was walking. But then it's like four CIA agents like was walking with me. It's like they was walking me. It's like they was walking me somewhere. Like like I was in custody. You know what I'm saying? And it was like four people in suits. You know what I'm saying? Like like we was walking somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like you say they escorting you from jail to the courthouse or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I was in custody and it was like four people in suits and they was escorting me, right? And then I just screamed the name Jesus. I was like, Jesus! Like, I was screaming it loud, and I, and I held it. You know what I'm saying? Not like, not like, Jesus! And that was it. Like, I was like, Jesus! Like, you know what I'm saying? I held it. And, and while I did that, like, they started cringing. Like, the four people that was, and like, the four people that I was in their custody, it, it's like they were CIA agents or something. But when I called the name Jesus, I was like, Jesus! And I and I and I just I just you know what I'm saying I said the name, but it lasted for so long. You know what I'm saying? I, I held it as long as I could, like Jesus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, but when I said the name Jesus, like they started cringing, like they was like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like they couldn't take it, like it was unbearable. They was like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that. You know what I'm saying? And it was it's crazy, man. That was that was the dream I had while I still had that job. I ain't I ain't tell my wife about it. I ain't told nobody about that. But it wasn't long after that, man. You know what I'm saying? I was on the job. I just felt the devil attacking me, man. And then, you know what I'm saying? I got into it with this lady on the job. You know what I'm saying? She just wanted to pick an argument with me. You know what I'm saying? But I, I but God had woke me up early that morning anyway. Probably I used to be at work like 10. But I had I used to probably normally get up about maybe seven or eight, but I remember getting up like six this morning. Out at, you know what I'm saying, that morning, and I was just praying. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Cause God God will do that. Sometimes when God knows something finna happen, he'll wake you up earlier than usual. So I woke up early and I was in prayer. I used to always pray for about an hour in tongues. 
You know what I'm saying? And then pray on the way to work. So I'll be fully prayed up and be, be in the word for about 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be powered up every day. You know what I'm saying? When I went to the to the to the job. You know what I'm saying? But God had woke me up early that morning, right? So then I got into it with this lady that same day. You know what I'm saying? And I, I knew it was the devil. So I'm like, forget the argument. I just thought. I cast the devil out in Jesus' name. I command you to loose. You know what I'm saying? I plead the blood and, and all that. And you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The situation was over with after a while. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, you know what I'm saying? Uh, ain't, ain't got no hard feelings about uh, against nobody. You know what I'm saying? I, I pray for all them people that I used to work with. You know what I'm saying? But that was just a little situation that day. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't it. Like, Somebody was a like something was going on. I don't know exactly what it was, but I, I know it was something going on. And it wasn't just the devil. It was people involved trying to set me up on something. I don't know what it was. I think it might have been my manager. You know what I'm saying? Because all that stuff broke out when she was on vacation. You know what I'm saying? That's when I started feeling like somebody was plotting on me. You know what I'm saying? Trying to, you know what I'm saying? What was working against me behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? She was on vacation when all this stuff started breaking out, though. So then, even after that, I just felt like I was, like, under attack. And then, at some point in time, I used to work at at, at, a, at, at Dillard's in the mall selling women's shoes. So, you know, I'm standing on the sales floor. And then something happened, and I just started, like, so I don't know if somebody said something or if I felt something. Or I just started preaching, you know, preaching the word, you know, in power, right? And then, no, 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 I know what it was. Uh, I had customers, like, I felt like they were trying to, like, waste my time on purpose. But I was always nice and, you know what I'm saying, customer service. And <laughs> I was always good with the customers, but I had a feeling like like some of them customers were trying to just waste my time. Have me going back and getting all these shoes and, you know, you ain't trying to buy nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I was kind of, uh, I felt like, I, I felt like it was an attack, but I felt like, People was like in a conspiracy against me, right? And I know the devil was the root of it. But sometimes you be under attack and, you know, and it's not really like that. And you just kind of feel like that is, like it is. You know what I'm saying? But either way, you know what I'm saying? But now, yeah, something had happened. I ended up preaching on the floor. You know what I'm saying? And then I had went to lunch. And then in the mall, I was still turned up. The anointing was just on me. And then, you know what I'm saying, I in the middle of the mall, I, I, you know what I'm saying, there was people there. I started preaching, you know what I'm saying, and then I went on about my business, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but that was the fulfillment of that dream, you know what I'm saying. But, hey, it get real it get real on the job, man. But, you know what I'm saying, it, it gets so real, man, when God really got you set apart like that. And he got you in that pressure cooker and, and he testing you and he trying you. You know what I'm saying? You just got to look to God, man. You know what I'm saying? But a faith that can't be tested, it can't be trusted. You know what I'm saying? For real, for real. You know what I'm saying? And then when God tests you, you know what I'm saying? Before the test even come, he, it's, he got an intention on blessing you. You know what I'm saying? Before he even allowed that test to hit Job, it was in God's intention to bless Job double than what he already had. You know what I'm saying? You, don't, you ain't thinking about all that. You know what I'm saying? When you under the pressure of the test. But before God even allowed the test to hit Job, it was already in his mind to bless Job double. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with Joseph. It was already in his mind what he wanted to do with Joseph. You know what I'm saying? But before all of the trials and tribulation came. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's real. Yeah, this one is going to be kind of long. I might have to split it up in about, you know what I'm saying, two, three parts. You know what I'm saying? But hey, you know what I'm saying? It get it get real on the job, man. You know what I'm saying? It get it get real on the job, you know what I'm saying? It get real on the job, man. That, that that's all I'm gonna say right there. You know what I'm saying? But uh yeah, you 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 can't compromise on the job, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't can't compromise on the job as long as God call you to the job. You there to be a witness, to be a shining light. You know what I'm saying? And don't be scared to tell somebody about Jesus if it's the right situation. If it's the right circumstance and, and you know, don't be scared to correct nobody. You know what I'm saying? Because people who don't even know about God will be trying to talk about God and tell you about God and, and say they okay. You know, always do it in love. 
You know what I'm saying? I always do it in love, but don't be scared to tell nobody about the Lord. Because these folk are trying to tell you about God. And they really trying to defend their sin and defend the sins of other people. You know what I'm saying? But God's calling us to holiness. You know what I'm saying? He loves us before we ever even, you know what I'm saying, get holy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he is calling us to holiness. You know what I'm saying? And matter of fact, since I said that, I'm going to flip this thing on the back right here, you know what I'm saying, God was showing me, God was showing me some things, you know what I'm saying, I, I got, I got a, I got a lot, man, I don't even know, I don't know, I guess I should, you know what I'm saying, but hey, the, the real holiness of God, man, you know what I'm saying, I'm finna get into real holiness and, and, and false holiness, you know what I'm saying, matter of fact, I might just, I might just do this part one right here, I'm not finna get into that, you know what I'm saying, I'm not finna get into that yet, you know what I'm saying, but hey, you know what I'm saying? It, it get it get real on the job. It's real in the field. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know what I'm saying? Be a servant. You know what I'm saying? Be a shining light. You know what I'm saying? Don't be scared to tell these people about the Lord, especially if they bring it up. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to be out there trying to, you know what I'm saying, preach to nobody and all that. You know what I'm saying? But but if it happens, it happens. You know what I'm saying? Because, see, they'll try to put you in bondage on the job. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, remember, man, it's people... That, that God done called, and they can't get jobs, but they called to the ministry to get a life and a heart and a time to it. Then you got people with good jobs want to be in the ministry, but they not even called to the ministry. You know what I'm saying? You got people playing games in the ministry. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, remember, it ain't the gift that makes somebody false. It's your heart. You know what I'm saying? But if you're a real one, then your gift ought to be right. You know what I'm saying? Your gift ought to be right. You know what I'm saying? But but one thing I will say in the Old Testament, those prophets, you know what I'm saying? It was such a um it was such an extraordinary encounter because see they didn't have the Holy Ghost dwelling in them and you know what I'm saying? They didn't have the Holy Ghost dwelling in them, you know what I'm saying, like, like Christians today. So it was such a supernatural encounter because the Holy Ghost would come upon them. You know what I'm saying? The Holy Ghost would come upon them in such a supernatural way. It'll be so extraordinary, so supernatural, that when the Holy Ghost came on them, you know what I'm saying, they couldn't miss it. You know what I'm saying? The prophecy was so extraordinary and supernatural the way God dealt with them when His Spirit came upon them that, you know what I'm saying, they didn't have no business missing no prophecy. You know what I'm saying? Unless the people repented or something and that changed, you know what I'm saying, the outcome you know what I'm saying? Or else they prophesied something which was so far off the people couldn't judge the prophecy. See, but nowadays we got the Holy Ghost dwelling in us. I'm taking up for the people who done missed some prophecies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, nowadays we got the Holy Ghost dwelling in us. And the voice of God is, it's not necessarily that supernatural shaking, that supernatural lightning. It can be that. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of times it's that still small voice. And since we hear God a lot of times by a still small voice, sometimes it's easy to miss God because that still small voice might be you. That still small voice might be your mind. That still small voice might be your heart. You know what I'm saying? Wishful thinking. <laughs> what you want it to be. What you wish God would say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And sometimes that still small voice is God. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's actually easier to miss it nowadays than it was back then. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of times it's good to weigh the word. Sometimes it's good to get confirmation on the word. You know what I'm saying? If you're not sure it's God, a lot of times you just got to give it time. If you think God calling you to do something, you might not do it right away. But if it's God, he'll kind of put it on your heart. Then it might kind of go away. But if it's God, it'll come back. You know what I'm saying? It, it might be like a an uh, impression, like a desire, it might be um, like God just put it on your heart, but it's it's something serious, right? So you don't know if you I, like you don't know if I should, if you should just do it the first time God give it to you. So you kind of oh let me hold off on that. But if it's God, it's gonna come back, and you might put it off again, and and it'll come back. You know what I'm saying? It might, it'll come back periodically. That's how you know it's God, cause you don't know if it's your desire. Should I do that? So then you be like, nah, you know what I'm saying? You brush it off. But if it's God, he'll bring it back. 
that's how it is a lot of time with them impressions that he, he just put something on your heart. You know what I'm saying? And then sometimes he'll drop something on your spirit. Like it'll just like literally like in your spirit, like just drop. You know what I'm saying? Like when you drop a rock into some water, like, bloop, you know what I'm saying? God sometimes will drop something in your spirit just like, bloop, you know what I'm saying? And you know it was God just because the way he dropped it in your spirit. You know it's God. And like I said, me... A lot of times, it's what I feel. Me, it's not so much I heard this or I heard that. A lot of times, it's what I feel. And then sometimes, you, you can always ask God for confirmation and he'll confirm it. You know what I'm saying? He can confirm it in different ways. Somebody else say that. You read something in the Bible that you were just thinking. You know what I'm saying? Or you see something on TV that you were just, you know what I'm saying? He can, he can, he can, he can confirm the word a lot of different ways. You know what I'm saying? Um... So I'm kind of just talking about hearing from God right now, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's actually easy. I ain't going to say easy because that's what you have to learn. That's what you have to grow in. You have to grow in discerning when it's God and when it's yourself or if it's the devil trying to deceive you. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all about growth. You just have to learn. You have to discern. You know what I'm saying? Hebrews, what is it, the end of... Uh, the end of Hebrews chapter 5, you know, you know what I'm saying? Those who have their senses exercised by reason of use, you know what I'm saying? And, and they can discern both good and evil, you know what I'm saying? Those, the, you know what I'm saying, strong meat belong to those that are of full age, you know what I'm saying? Who, who have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Give me that scripture. I want, I want to quote that one exactly, you know what I'm saying? I want to quote that one exactly. But strong meat for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Talking about spiritually grown up, mature. And the King James calls it perfect. You know what I'm saying? When you mature, you, you're a spiritual adult. You know what I'm saying? Strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You know what I'm saying? It's talking about good and evil, but it's other things that you have to discern. You have to be able to discern when you hear from God or if it's just yourself or if it's the devil. You know what I'm saying? You have to, it's different things you have to discern. You know what I'm saying? You grow, you grow. You grow in time. You grow over time. You know what I'm saying? You grow over time. You know what I'm saying? Just walking with God. Intimacy, like I said, like I started off with. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, I think I'm going to title this Intimacy. And then I think I'm going to start another video when I, go into, when I go into all this other stuff. You know what I'm saying? But intimacy with God is, is very important. You know what I'm saying? That's when you get your instructions, your directions. You know what I'm saying? That's when God show you things that's to come. You know what I'm saying? You know what it is when he wake you up early, four in the morning and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? A lot, especially when you know you, you work a job and you don't know what you're going to encounter during the day. You know what I'm saying? When God wake you up early, a lot of times it's for prayer. You know what I'm saying? Just to get you prepared because the Holy Ghost knows it's something to happen. He don't want you to react the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? And, and corporate America might not like how you react. You know what I'm saying? But it's better than... You know what I'm saying? Getting gangsta on somebody, then they want to have the police in your life and press charges. See, you you handle that thing in the Holy Ghost. See, they don't know what to do. Then they want to persecute you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You handle that thing in the Holy Ghost. Cause if I know it's a spiritual, if I know it, it's a if I know at the root of it, it's spiritual, I'm gonna deal with it with spiritual weapons. They just gonna have to be mad at me. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm gonna try to cast the devil out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to plead the blood. You know what I'm saying? And really, I, I think that's really what they wanted. You know what I'm saying? They didn't want, they ain't know how I was going to handle it. You know what I'm saying? They wanted me to handle it in a different kind of way, be trying to fight fire with fire. But sometimes you got to fight fire with water. You know what I'm saying? When the devil trying to act up, you don't get in the flesh trying to deal with the devil. You know what I'm saying? You get in the spirit, you know? So, uh, hey, it get, it get real on the job, man. But like I said, man, think about it. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. You know what I'm saying? Your boss, your manager, somebody like that want to ask you about the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Do you got the courage to tell them? 
know what I'm saying, that they that they need to repent. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about trying to make somebody think God hate them and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I'm talking about really tell them the truth about Christ. You know, you can be saved by believing in God, but he but but a couple things that come along with that, you know what I'm saying? You have to make a total commitment. I ain't talking about saying God on the right hand, but then you living in sin on the left hand. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying, believing in God, giving him your whole life, turning from the things in your life that's wrong, turning from your sin, you know what I'm saying? Fornication, shacking up, living together with somebody you're not married, you know what I'm saying? And now and nowadays, you know, homosexuality. You know what I'm saying? Even though the job accepts it. You know what I'm saying? When that boss asks you about God, you going to tell him the truth? You know what I'm saying? I know you feel like you was born that way. You know what I'm saying? But my God, you know what I'm saying? That, 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 that lifestyle is not pleasing to God. But he'll help you to change. He'll empower you to live the life that he wants you to live. Ain't nobody living for God on their own strength. I'm talking about will you really tell him. You know what I'm saying? Because it'd it, it be so much compromise going on on the job. You know what I'm saying? It'd be so much compromise going on. You know what I'm saying? And uh, people ask people about God and they just tell them it's all good and don't even tell them the truth. And, 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 and everything we do in love because that's the nature of Christ. I'm going to start another video and go into some more stuff though. You know what I'm saying? But... Yeah, that's just what I wanted to say about jobs, ministry, calling, uh, compromise, you know what I'm saying, motives determine who's real and who's fake. You know what I'm saying? That's the main thing. Because you're going to see more of that than anything. You know what I'm saying? You're going to see more than that than anything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm going to go. I had some other stuff in my notes. I'm going to go and get into that too right now. You know what I'm saying? But it's the motives. You know what I'm saying? It's the motives. You know, false teachers, false pastors, false preachers, false evangelists, <laughs> false uh, uh, apostles, false prophets. Only a few of them are fake because they pretended like they had the gift and didn't have the gift. Only a few of them are fake because of that. You know what I'm saying? But most of them really got some type of a gift. But their motives are not to please God. Their motives are money. Their motives are fame. Their motives, they want to have influence and prestige. You know what I'm saying? Their motives are not to please God. And they lured by the money. And you got folk in ministry want to live a rock star lifestyle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got people in ministry... You know what I'm saying? Want to have a cult following. You know what I'm saying? Personality cults. And, and, and it's, it's all type of things, man. It's all type of things going on, man. And, and most of the people that's false, it's their motives. When Paul was talking about it in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 11, it was money. You know what I'm saying? And Peter talked about they want to make merchandise of you and Jude and and Peter and John said, you know, uh, what John say in first John, he said, uh, he said, he, he said, they, <laughs> what did he say? He said they were of us, but then he, he said, he, he said they left that it might be manifest that they were not all up. Hell yeah. He said they went out from us. You know what I'm saying? That it might be manifest that they were not of us. Man, give me that scripture, man. <laughs> I like that one too. You know what I'm saying? First John, man. You know what I'm saying? First John, man. You know I'm saying I'm finna get into a lot of things. I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna go on and do it. Yeah, give me first John chapter 2, verse 19. He said, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out. That they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. <laughs> I like that one. First John chapter 2 verse 19, man. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, it's the motives, man. Nine times out of ten, what makes a, a, a person a fake one, it's not the, 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 the inaccuracy of the gift 
or or that they didn't have the gift. Nine times out of ten, a false one got some kind of gift. If it ain't the gift of prophecy, it, it, it's some kind of gift, some kind of ministry gift. Whether it's just being nice with the word, they that they able to handle the word real well. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, we we we. It's not. Hey, and a lot of times it's not that they don't have the word, it's how they deal with the word. It's how they present the word, how they handle the word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so nine times out of ten, they got some kind of gift. You know what I'm saying? It might be prophecy. It, it, it might be, you know what I'm saying, they, they able to teach the word and explain it real good or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, they motive it's not to honor God and it's not to please God. That's not they uh 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 that that's not they main uh goal. You know what I'm saying? A real one, they main goal is to honor God. They main goal is to make sure they pleasing God. See, see, and, and, and a real one, just like God sees you all the time, you got God in your sight all the time. You always mindful of God. You know what I'm saying? So you know what I'm saying? You always examining yourself because you God conscious. And then I think don't I think New Age or somebody be trying to use that term Christ conscious. <laughs> so I don't mean it like the New Age people mean it. You know what I'm saying? But you always conscious. And it's not like just God just watching you, you know what I'm saying, trying to trying to find some dirt on you, but you know what I'm saying? You know that God is always with you. You know that the Holy Ghost is dwelling in you. You always want to keep an atmosphere in your life to keep the Holy Ghost comfortable. You don't want to grieve the Spirit. You know what I'm saying? So just like you know God is always watching you, you always conscious of God. You always want to make sure whether you in a crowd, whether you by yourself, you want to make sure you live in a life that's pleasing unto God. You don't want to do nothing to offend God. You don't want to do nothing to grieve the Spirit. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot. But mo most of the time, the false ones, it's their motive. You know what I'm saying? It it's it's their motive. They, 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 they top, their top desire, their top motive is not pleasing God. It's, it's the things of man. Some people just like position. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they just like that position. And they, and they may not even be called to it. See a lot of a lot of the church has been uh it's been hijacked by businessmen. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of these guys was called to the business realm and they done went in ministry with a business mindset. And they run the church like a business and it's all about growing the church and and you know what I'm saying? It's it's all about marketing and all this kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And and, and they just want to grow the church at any expense. And, and souls is like down on the list, and growing the church is 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 top priority. But a lot of people, you know, what I'm saying when God really call you to this thing, your top priority. Now, don't get me wrong; you still want the church to grow and all that, but your top priority is pleasing God and doing what He would have you to do. That's your top priority, and, and trying to get these souls into the kingdom of heaven. You can't make nobody, you know what I'm saying, live this life. You know what I'm saying? But you're going to do all that you can to present the truth to the people, you know what I'm saying, so you can help them to live this life, the ones that want to do it. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to help the ones get in who want to get in. You're trying to help the ones live for God who want to live for God. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the heart of somebody that's really called to this thing. And, and then when you really call to it, you got a gift, you got an anointing that comes with it, and you just surrender that to God and let them use you. You know what I'm saying? And, and let them use you. But when God really call you to this thing, man, it's your heart, your top priority is to please God. And everything else comes under that. You know what I'm saying? Everything else comes under that. You know what I'm saying? But I think that's all I'm going to say on this one, man. You know what I'm saying? I might do the other one later tonight or something. I may not go right into it. I got, I got a lot to say, but I'm just going to chill with it right there, man. You know what I'm saying? Get back into this other stuff later. You know what I mean? But God bless everybody. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that's in a test, man, you got to pass that test. It ain't about making the people take sides with you. 
It ain't about turning the people against the one that did you wrong. It's about living like Christ, man. You know what I'm saying? Whatever blessings you don't get on this side, you're going to get them in the, in the life to come. You know what I'm saying? Keep your heart right, man. Live like Christ. I don't care what somebody did to you. If you step out of the nature of Christ and you begin to walk in the flesh, then you in danger of hell fire. To be carnally minded is, is death. You know what I'm saying? To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Those that walk in the flesh cannot please God. You know what I'm saying? So, it ain't about trying to make people take sides with you and, and, and trying to, you know, look, 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 trying to justify yourself in the sight of man. It's about being right with God, handling situations the way Jesus would handle them situations. You know what I'm saying? And I just thank, I thank God, you know what I'm saying? And God help us to keep the faith, you know what I'm saying? We being tested, we being tried, you know what I'm saying? But God ain't going to suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no temptation taking you, but but that which is common to man. You know what I'm saying? And God will. You know what I'm saying? I got the scripture out of order, but same same point being made. You know what I'm saying? But with the temptation, God will. Temptation, not temptation like, oh, I'm finna sin, I'm tempted. But temptation like that trial, that test. You know what I'm saying? But will with the temptation, God will with the temptation. You know what I'm saying? Make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Count it as joy. You know what I'm saying? When you fall into divers temptations, talking about trials, talking about tests, knowing the trying of your faith, work of patience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then in Romans chapter 5, he say, uh, tribulation work if patience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Patience, experience, experience, hope. Hope make if not ashamed. The love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying? All that kind of stuff, man. I'm just chopping it up with you right now. You know what I'm saying? I have some notes, man, but I just feel... You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this, this thing real. You, you got to learn how to wait on God, man. You know what I'm saying? A faith, a faith that can't be tested, it can't be trusted. You know what I'm saying? You got to know how to wait on God. You know what I'm saying? You got to. You know what I'm saying? That's a way of life. You know what I'm saying? You got to wait on God, but you got to make sure God ain't waiting on you. And I'm getting real personal on this thing for some reason. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you, you take a leap of faith, man, and then it's like God don't come through as quick as you wanted him to come through. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And, and God doesn't, you know what I'm saying? If you suffering or whatever, you know, God ain't getting a kick out of that. You know what I'm saying? That means he testing you. If you if you know you right with God, and, and if it seemed like God the one got you into the situation you in, you know what I'm saying? And you know you living for God, you got to understand the nature of the test. It ain't that you done did nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? It ain't that you done missed God. You know what I'm saying? God got you in that test. And then sometimes people don't understand when, when God testing you, people want to throw in their two cents and, and, and they think, you know what I'm saying, they got a word from God for you and all this kind of stuff, just like it would with Job. You know what I'm saying? Job ain't did nothing wrong, but his friends, you know, that they want, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> his friends had some things to say, but they was off. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, other people who know God, they think, they know your situation better than you, but see that that's the nature of testing. But but God gave me this scripture too, though. He said, "Wisdom shall be justified of all her children." And what that means is, you know, what I'm saying if you obey in God, it might it might look bad for a season. It might look bad. It might look like you know what I'm saying, man. I don't think he really heard from God. I think he just did that on his own. I don't think God told him to do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That kind of stuff. Well, if God told him to do that, then how come God ain't doing this for him? You know, all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And then, and, and then you you know, you can't explain yourself to everybody. You you know, you, you ought not even try. You know what I'm saying? You just got to keep your mouth shut, trust God, and God will justify you in the end. When you pass the test and God do what he want to do with you, then it's going to be plain and obvious to everybody. You won't even have to explain. 
That's just like when Jesus on the cross. You know what I'm saying? That was the will of God for Jesus to go to the cross. So then he, he, he on the cross, oh man, he, he saved other people. Why he don't save himself? I thought he said he the son of God. Why he don't come down from the cross then? You know what I'm saying? All that kind of stuff. But then when he rose from the dead, when they couldn't find his body, then what? So, you know what I'm saying? You, you just have to obey God. You got to let him take you through the fire. Let them take you through the test. Let people say what they want to say. Let people think what they want to think. And wisdom will be justified of her children. Wisdom is the fear of God. Wisdom is to obey God. Wisdom is to let God lead you through whatever he's taking you through. And stay in obedience. Keep your heart right. Stay in the love of God. And then let God, you know what I'm saying, do what he want to do with you. And when he gets you to where you're going, then it's going to speak for itself. God will justify you. You don't have to justify yourself. But it get real out here, man. You know what I'm saying? It, it get real out here. And then it, it's so real because it's like, you know what I'm saying, when God call you off the job, man. When God call you off the job, it's like, I don't feel right if I ain't looking for a job. You know what I'm saying? It's like. I know God, I feel like, I know God called me off the job, but then it's like, I want to at least be putting in applications and stuff. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to just be like, God called me off the job, and then, like, I'm lazy sleeping in and, <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. Like, hold up, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got to, you know, even though you heard from God, it's like sometimes you still want to cover your tracks. And I'm telling you, man, God got them doors shut, man. I'll be looking for a job. You know what I'm saying? My wife work, and, and you know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. I ain't wasting my time. I'm in the presence of God. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes it make you feel bad. Like, my wife got a job, man. I ain't got no job. I mean, I, I know I'm dedicated to the Lord, and God, I know you called me to this season that I'm in right now. But God, what's happening? You know what I'm saying? So then I be putting in applications just to say I'm trying. You know what I'm saying? Cause it make me feel better. At least I'm trying, you know, but, but I, I, I really believe it's God. Cause when I was in the world, I wasn't living for God. I used to get jobs pretty easy. It wouldn't take me no more than two months to get a job. And then I always pray this prayer. I'd be like, God, you know what I'm saying? I feel like you called me off the job, but at the same time, and every time I put in an application, God, if you want me to have this job, open up the door for me. God, if this is not your perfect will, if it's not your perfect will for me to have a job, then I don't care how many applications I put in. If it's not your perfect will for me to have a job, if you got something else for me and it just hadn't manifested yet, then shut it down. Don't let none of them applications go through. Don't give me no favor with nobody if it ain't your perfect will. But if it's your will for me to have a job, God, I ask you to open up the door for me. So I'm telling you the, the real in. I'm telling you the inside of the test. You know what I'm saying? For real, it get real, man. It get real, man. You know what I'm saying? It, it get it get real out here, man. You know what I'm saying? But I believe God, just like I told them folk when I quit the job. I said, hey, I trust God, man. Y'all not finna have me scared to talk about Jesus. Y'all not finna have me scared to tell somebody. You know what I'm saying? They need to turn from their sin. You know what I'm saying? You not finna have me. You know what I'm saying? You not finna have me scared. You know what I'm saying? When I was in the world, I wasn't scared. So now that I'm with Christ, you're not finna shame me. Other people might compromise, but I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm set for the defense of this thing, this gospel. Earnestly contending for the faith of this thing. But I'm human. You know what I'm saying? I'm going through a test, man. And I'm not into begging for no money. I'm not into no gimmicks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm a I'm a, I got to be a real one, man. You know what I'm saying? I got to be a real one. I believe in being separated from the world. I believe if the world hated Christ, they going to hate me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I believe all that, man. You know what I'm saying? It's it's Jesus up for real. You know what I'm saying? But it came back to my mind. I might have to do a mixtape. I might have to go back to the prophesying ain't easy. <laughs> After I finished that volume nine, I said, hey, I'm, I'm through with the prophesying ain't easy. I don't know, man. I might have to start this volume 10 prophesying ain't easy mixtape. You know what I'm saying? I guess I'm just being transparent. You know what I'm saying? But it's real out here, man. 
You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, people want to talk about you. Yeah, some men just don't want to work and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah, he want his wife and his mama to take care of him. And, you know what I'm saying? People people got a lot of things to say, man. You know, they'll really, they'll really try to kick you when you down. You know what I'm saying? They don't, if you ain't got a job, they don't see the applications that you putting in. And then there's a lot of ministers that work. You know what I'm saying? But for some reason... I just feel God, I guess God got something for me, man. But I know for a fact I'm called to this. I'm talking about wholeheartedly commit my whole life to it. You know what I'm saying? I'm called to it. You know what I'm saying? But that was God's decision. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Because I do it however God want me to do it. God, if you want me to work a job and be in the ministry, I'm cool with that. You know what I'm saying? I'm still going to have an intimate on fire relationship with you whether I got a job or not. But if you done called me to not have a job, you know what I'm saying, then that's cool too. I'm going to spend my time seeking your face when I don't have no trouble doing it. And then, you know, you, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> your, your people will, you know what I'm saying, your people will be, you know what I'm saying, I'm telling you, man, you know what I'm saying, it's real. Your people want to know what's going on with you, you know what I'm saying, your mama, your wife, other people, they want to know what's going on with you, man. You know what I'm saying? But this is this, this some transparent stuff right here, man. But, you know what I'm saying? God is good. You know what I'm saying? And I thank God. You know, I pray. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't let me be lazy. You know what I'm saying? Don't let me miss your will. I want the perfect will of God. I don't care what it is, God. Whatever you got for me, I want it. Whatever you got for me, I want it. But see, a lot of them guys went through that in the old days. God called uh, certain people in the full-time ministry. You know what I'm saying? Starting off, that's the roughest point. You know what I'm saying? When you starting off, that's that roughest point. Because, see, once you get going, then you got momentum. You know what I'm saying? But but when you start out, and then the Antichrist society we live in today, and people ain't trying to hear the real word of God. People want somebody to... You know what I'm saying? Fluff them up. People want somebody to prophesy a house and a car, and you ain't even totally sold out to God. You know what I'm saying? People don't be, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't really want the real gospel. You know what I'm saying? Especially, you talking about calling the lost. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, Christians, people who are already saved, you know what I'm saying? But the ones who are not saved... Man, that you know, they they not really trying to hear the word, and then you gotta compete with all the false ones who who telling people what they want to hear, and they not really telling people they gotta turn from sin. And I'm gonna tell you what's so cold about the game now. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not mad at nobody, you know what I'm saying? But I'm a, I'm a, I'm finna name some names, man. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna let you know though, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of the a lot of the big guys, and I'm I'm gonna tell you this is what God showed me. People like Joel Osteen, you know what I'm saying? People like T.D. Jakes and, and Creflo Dollar. He, Creflo Dollar used to preach the truth, man, about, uh, I don't know, man, maybe, maybe about three, four, five years ago, Creflo used to preach the truth. He used to preach against fornication. And then I remember Creflo, he used to preach like, if you claim you're a prophet or you're an apostle, you ought to be the main one walking in love. You ought to have the best attitude. You know what I'm saying? You ought to be the main one walking in love, ready to help somebody, ready to serve. I remember Cruffalo teaching that stuff, man. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? All these guys, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Joseph Prince, a lot of these guys, they got revelation. But if you're not saved, it's not going to do nothing for you. See, if you saved and you already living for God, them guys will say some stuff that will help you. See, this is what God showed me. You know what I'm saying? But if you say if you're not saved, you won't be convicted. If you if you not saved, you probably won't get saved listening to any of them. You know what I'm saying? They'll tell you some good stuff about life. And if you're a Christian, they'll tell you some stuff that's gonna help you out as a Christian. But the one thing they don't do, there's no call to repentance. There's no call. To turn from your sin. There's no call. To change. You know what I'm saying. There's no call to be separated from the world. See this is the stuff it's going to take. If you're really trying to make heaven. Because if you ain't separated from the world. You're going to be falling for every trick of Satan. 
You might do good for a while, but you'll never really be strong the way Christ want a Christian to be strong. You'll never really be strong enough to stand up, to stand against the wiles and deceptions and temptations of the devil. You'll never be strong enough to overcome Satan if you're not separated from the world. That's the nature of a real Christian. You know what I'm saying? Your hate for sin and your love for God is going gonna, is, is gonna to be a natural sifting out of the world. So, and then the people that's not saved that listen to them, they might hear some good things, but there is, it ain't going to be no call to repentance. They might say, invite Jesus in your heart, but it ain't going to be no real call to repent. It ain't going to be no real call to turn from your sin. It ain't going to be no call to be separated from the world. You know what I'm saying? So there's, it ain't going to be no conviction. There's not going to be any conviction that I need to change. And, and, and when I want to give my life, I'm turning from one thing. I'm turning from the life that I was living and I'm turning to Christ to follow him and live the life of Jesus and let him live through me. You know what I'm saying? They just kind of be like, you kind of, you are how you are. You accept Christ. And I done said it before. You just add Jesus into everything else you got going, which is a mixture with the world, which is not true salvation. And that's really deception because you're not making a clear call to the lost. So the lost people aren't really getting saved. You know what I'm saying? You you might kind of help the people out that's already saved, which is good. It's better than nothing, but that's how deception is. It's not total. I mean, I'm talking about slick deception because that's what makes it deception. You know what I'm saying? It looks enough like the real thing to blend in with the real thing. You know what I'm saying? It's not totally the Bible say this and I'm going to teach that. Like that deception is easy to spot. But the deception that's hard to spot is when you just take out a few key ingredients. You take out repentance. You take out the danger and the consequences of sin, which will take you to hell if you don't turn from your sin. And then it's like a, a light gospel. It's it, like you can have Jesus and the world. You don't have to really turn from sin. You don't have to really turn from your ways. And, and that's the strongest form of deception because it's got some truth in it, but it's not the whole truth. It's got some truth in it, but it's not the whole truth. You know what I'm saying? It's got some Bible in it, but a lot of the key ingredients that cause a person to cross over from death unto life, you done left out. You know what I'm saying? You talking, God. You preaching the word. You know what I'm saying? And the people who are already saved, they can relate to it and it might even benefit them. Because I can watch Joel Osteen and, and it, I, I might hear some good stuff that can help me. But I'm already living for God. And think about that sinner that's looking. It's like, okay, yeah, he's saying some good things, but there's no call to repentance. You're not letting people know what really comes with this life. You're not letting people know. You know what I'm saying? You're not letting people know what God is really calling them to do. Jesus came to call sinners to repentance. There's no call to repent. There's no dealing with sin. And, and the person's responsibility to turn from sin. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's what God showed me. That's, that's why the deception is so hard to spot. It ain't like they teaching something that's opposite of the Bible. They teaching what's in the Bible, but they not calling the lost to salvation. They not calling the sinner to repentance. You know what I'm saying? And there's no conviction. There's no conviction. There's nothing being said that's going to make a person feel sorry for their sin. Like it said, Peter told them, folks, y'all the ones that killed Jesus. It said they were pricked to the heart. That means they felt bad. They were pricked in their heart. I want to say X, either chapter 2 or chapter 3. Then they said, what must I do to be saved? You know what I'm saying? What, what, what should we do? 
You know what I'm saying? He was saying repent. You know what I'm saying? Be baptized. Believe on Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? It starts with believing. But like I said, what is really believing? Believing is when you commit your life. And in committing your life to Christ, you turning from your old life. The stuff in your old life that's not pleasing to God. You turning from that. You committing to live your life for Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So the deception is strong. You know, for all you people in the ministry that's making these people your role models... You know what I'm saying? Study Jesus in the Word, man. Study the apostles. Study the message that they preached. Don't, 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 um, don't model yourself after these, you know what I'm saying, folks on TV and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Don't read your Bible. Look at the ministry of Jesus. Look at the ministry of the apostles in Acts. You know what I'm saying? The epistles. Uh, uh, the book of James, you know what I'm saying? They're going to break it down. Faith without works, you know what I'm saying? You say you believe, but where's the demonstration, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Cause the, 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 you you, you got to have sharp discernment. You got to have sharp discernment, man. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, it's real out here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got a bunch of stuff, man. I'm going to get around to it. I was going to do it all the night, but... I don't think I will. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a whole off. I'm a whole off on, on on some of that. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? That's it right there, man. It's it's real out here though, man. Honor God with your heart. Honor God with your life. Trust God during the test. You know what I'm saying? Cause yeah, a, a faith that can't be tested, it can't be trusted. You know what I'm saying? But God is good. You know what I'm saying? Commit yourselves unto God. You know what I'm saying? When you suffer according to the will of God. You know what I'm saying? Commit yourself to Him. You know what I'm saying? In well doing. As unto a faithful creator. 1 Peter 4.19. God gave me that scripture too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, God that gave me that too. But it's real, man. You know what I'm saying? Trust God. You know what I'm saying? When you're going through the test, man. Go through that test, man. Draw closer to God. Draw even closer to God. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and stay focused on Him. Don't, don't, don't get focused on the things of the flesh. Don't get focused on what you don't have and what you need. Because God is an on-time God. And, and you don't know. You don't know how God going to come through for you. You might think it's this way. He come through that way. You think God going to come through from over here. He come through from over there. You know what I'm saying? And, and God is honored. You know what I'm saying? When you trust in him and, and, and your faith is not moved and your faith is not shaken and you're not staggering at the promises of God and you don't always know what he's going to do. But God, I know you are loving God. I know I'm living for you. So I know I'm not being punished or nothing like that. I know I'm I know. And matter of fact, I know you love me even when I wasn't living for you. Now I'm living for you. I know you a good father. I know you're going to take care of me. You know what I'm saying? I know you know what I need. You want me to have the things that I need more than I want to have the things that I need. You got to know God. <laughs> you, you, you got to know him. You know what I'm saying? You got to know God. And, and, and he's, he's an all-powerful, uh, uh, omniscient God. He can move heaven and earth for you. You know what I'm saying? But God is honored when you go through that test and you're not shaking and your faith is not staggering and you're not double-minded up and down on the waves of the sea. You know what I'm saying? And you got to talk, you got to try to get God to talk to you as much as you, as you can because that's what's going to help you. The more he talks, the more it's going to help you. But at the same time, when you're in a test, the teacher ain't just talking. You know what I'm saying? The teacher's quiet. The teacher want to see how you act. Matter of fact, uh, I, I don't remember which one. I know it's in, uh, I think it's in Kings. I think it's in Chronicles. I don't know if it's first or second. I think it's second Kings something. And then I, I guess second Chronicles something. And then I think Isaiah 38, something like that. But Hezekiah, after Hezekiah had got sick and he recovered and the men from Babylon came, it said God left Hezekiah just to try him. God withdrew himself from Hezekiah just to test him. 
I don't, I don't know where that scripture is, but but God brought that to my remembrance. You know what I'm saying? That test going to show what you're made of. And then I told God, you know, you know, just like um, I told my wife too. You know what I'm saying? When, when, when you in that test, man, you know, God ain't going to test you more than what you can handle. Like if you in that test and your faith start getting weak and, and you just can't take it no more, don't you know God can go on and end the test? Because he, he ain't going to test you to break you. He'll test you to show where you're at. And when you get to your breaking point, God will go on and end that thing and go on and come through for you. But he did it because you was at your breaking point. It might have been in the will of God to test you, to take you further in the test. But he saw you crumbling, so he went on and saved you. Like when Peter was walking on that water, he started sinking and Jesus went on and saved him. But it was really the will of God for Jesus to come on all the way across the water, just like Jesus did. But Peter faith fell. I'm talking about just in that situation. He started looking at the wind, right? He started looking at the wind, boisterous. And, and then he started sinking. He said, Jesus, save me. That's how it is when you're in the test. So you can be going through a test and, you know, you start panicking. God, I don't know what to do. God, you know what I'm saying? You, you basically start losing faith and God will go on and come through for you and go on and end the test. But, it was, but God really wanted to test you even more. You know what I'm saying? Because you got... You got God's got, got what he wants the test to be. But if you can't pass the test and you start losing faith, God can go in and end the test. I don't know if people know what I'm saying, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I hope y'all know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? You can be in the test, but if you got the faith, then you can pass the test and go the distance in the test. And when you come to the end of the test, you step into the next thing that God had for you. But then also you can be in the test and you haven't really fulfilled the whole test yet. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you haven't finished the whole test. But your faith get weak. You start panicking. And then God just go on and end the test for his mercy's sake. And he do it for you. Because he didn't want you to sink. He wasn't trying to break you. You know what I'm saying? So he, he went on and ended the test early. Because he saw you couldn't handle it. But it was really the will of God. To, to test you more than, than what you than, than what you did. You know what I'm saying? God had a full test for you. And if you can pass it, then you come to the end of that test into the next thing that God got for you, which is usually some type of blessing. Like Job, you know what I'm saying? Like Daniel, you know what I'm saying? He survived the uh the lion's den and he was promoted to honor. The three Hebrew boys, they passed that test. They was promoted to honor. Right afterwards, you know what I'm saying? Abraham, you know what I'm saying? He he passed the test with Isaac. You know what I'm saying? So God's got the test in his mind. It's a full test. And, and, and if you pass the test, you know what I'm saying? You come out as pure gold, right? But then sometimes you can't pass the test. You get to talking crazy. You get to panicking. And you really don't pass the test. You really don't finish the test. But God cuts it short early. For your sake, out of his mercy's sake. And then you know that you wasn't as strong as you thought you was. So I told God, I don't want you to cut my test early. God, let me finish the whole test. You know what I'm saying? God, I'm going to trust you. I don't care what I got to lose. I don't care what people got to say about me. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care who get mad. I don't care what it looked like in, in, the, other, in the sight of people. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? You got me set apart. You got me going through this test. I know your will is good. You know what I'm saying? So I know I'm being tested. I know I'm not being punished. You know what I'm saying? So I know I'm being tested. So I said, God, I'm going to finish my test. Give me the strength. Give me the faith to finish this thing. You gonna, I'm going to go all the way to the end of my test, and I'm going to finish this test. And then whatever you got for me next, then that's what it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? That's what I told God. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want you to stop my test early. Don't, don't, don't let me get crazy and get panicky and get doubtful. And get scared and you nervous and all that kind of stuff. And, and then you have to stop the test early. You know what I'm saying? For my sake, I said, nah, I don't want to have to go through that. I'm just, just keep me, 
and, and, and bring me at the test when you ready. Don't don't let me lose faith and you got to cut the test short early. Because, see, that, that done shipwreck some people. See, some people was called of God. They were called of God, but they, you know what I'm saying? But during the test is, they lost faith during the test. And then they, they take matters into their own hands. See, if I was if I was in the world and I was going through something like this, you know what I'm saying? I'd be selling dope or, or you know what I'm saying? Thinking about robbing somebody or something. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Or selling some dope or something. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not who I was then. You know what I'm saying? But see, a lot of people, even 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 when you was doing everything right and, and you got a call and a God on your life, the test will make you or break you. Because God taking you through that test for a reason. God take, and actually, this, this stuff that I'm ministering right now, this is what God gave me yesterday. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and none of this was on my notes. This is what God gave me yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Cause then I kind of I got I got I got a little doubtful, but then I just kind of start meditating, and God kind of ministered to me while I was meditating. You know what I'm saying? And when when you start getting weary and doubtful, don't do too much, don't say too much. You know what I'm saying? When 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 you when you uh, if that doubt start coming in your mind and you start getting weary or whatever doing weary and well doing and doubt start coming to your mind and stuff like that don't say too much don't do too much you'll get yourself in trouble you know what i'm saying yeah you'll get yourself in trouble talking too much when you're going through a doubt spell you know what i'm saying or an unbelief spell or i don't know you know what i'm saying god it seemed like you just forsake him you done just left me out here you know what i'm saying when you get a feeling like that don't say too much, don't do too much. Matter of fact, just say a prayer. God, you know what I'm saying, I ask you to speak to me about my situation. And God will give you something good. Because you got to know the character of God. Paul said, I want to know him. The power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Being made conformable unto his death. How you going to know the fellowship of his sufferings if he can't even test you? And see, people who got a real calling of God on their life, they done backslid and took situations in their own hands during the test. They was doing good for a season, and God brought them into a test, and they lost faith, backslid, took situations into their own hands, and went in a direction that they know was not pleasing unto God. Watch this. Here goes something else that happened. God got you in the test. You don't understand it. So then you kind of get mad at God low key. This is what happened to me in L.A. But I had already started backsliding anyway. And then I got tested. And then you kind of get mad at God low key for, for allowing the test to come. And then you kind of like, like low key, like you really kind of mad at God. And you just like, well, you know what I'm saying? I'm just finna do me. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling how real it is, man. But I thank God. You know what I'm saying? I, I know him. You know what I'm saying? I know him. I know him for real. You know what I'm saying? I, I know God for real. I know the things people go through because I done been through them. I'm a human too. Elijah was a man of like passions just like we are. You know what I'm saying? But hey, see that, that test come. But see, God will give you, God ain't going to do no whole lot of talking when you're in the test. But if you need a word, he'll give it to you. He'll give you a little something to, to get you through. You know what I'm saying? He'll give you what you need to get through. You know what I'm saying? When you're having a weary, doubtful moment, you know what I'm saying? Ask God. Talk to God. He'll give you what you need to get you through that moment. Till you get back, you know what I'm saying, where you should be. Your faith get back on the right level. Because, see, you have moments. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about living in a state of doubt or living in a state of unbelief. I'm just talking about a, a moment. You know, and plus, when you're going through the test, the devil aiming at your mind the whole time. But he talk about that, that helmet of salvation. See, talking about that word of God hid in your heart. 
You know what I'm saying? Full of revelation. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to know how to get through the test, man. You know what I'm saying? You got you to gotta know how to get through the test, man. People get mad at God during the test. They don't understand. God ain't moving on, on the timetable that they want God to move. You know what I'm saying? God ain't moving on the timetable that they want him to move. You know what I'm saying? Then, then, then low key, they get mad. That, that they get kind of, kind of upset at God. And then you kind of be like, okay, God, that that's how you gonna do you? You gonna be absent on me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you kind of like, okay. You know what I'm saying, God? You you just gonna withdraw from me like that? You know what I'm saying? You, you gonna get quiet on me, God? You ain't gonna move for me? And I, and and people don't even say these things with their mouth. But see, this is the kind of thing they're thinking they heart. And then you know the devil trying to act, gas it up too. You know what I'm saying? The devil will put thoughts in your head. You know what I'm saying? You got to recognize that. That's why you talk about casting down imaginations. Because you got to measure your thoughts according to the word of God. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, these, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Because the devil know when you in the test. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm telling you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't be trying to hear it. I'm trying to get in the face of because I know what's going to get me through the test. I know getting in the face of God is going to get me through the test for however long the test lasts. If I stay in the face of God, I'm going to get through that thing without my faith being shaky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, if, you, if, you, if you let people get in their ear, they judgments and all that kind of stuff, then you start taking their side. And then, and then you don't get mad at yourself. You get mad at God. And I'm telling you, it seems like it seems like God just kind of like it seems because when you in a test, a test come not because you were doing something wrong. If, if you were doing something wrong and then the test came, you wouldn't be mad at God. You you'd be like, man, I deserved it. You know what I'm saying? But look at Job. See, the test come. When you're doing right. That's how you know it's a test. And if you know it's a test, you should be able to pass it. Because you know it's a test. That's one thing God don't keep secret. When you're going through a test, he lets you know it's a test. You know what I'm saying? And because of the fact that you was doing, doing good and doing right, that's why he let the test come. Because if you wasn't doing right, it's chastisement. It's not a test. It's chastisement. <laughs> when you're doing everything right, that's what makes it a test. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what makes it a test, man. But due to the fact that you was doing everything right, that's the same thing that can allow a person to get mad at God. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you got to be close to God because, like I said, it's a test and it ain't no secret that it's a test. But, you know what I'm saying? You may not always know it's a test. You know what I'm saying? I know it's a test. And God might let you know it's a test. But then at some other point in time, you might just, you know what I'm saying? That, that's why you can, that, that's why there's the, that's why there's the possibility of the person getting mad at God. Because they was doing right. So you you uh, so you got people who done fell out the ministry. Because God take them through a test. And um and they didn't quite understand the test. And God wasn't moving like they thought he was gonna move. And he wasn't moving in the time frame that they wanted him to move and and then they might have took some losses. You lose a couple things, lose a car or something like that, and and then you feel like, you know what I'm saying, you get mad at God. And you just like, okay, God, I've been living for you, and this is how you're going to do me? Well, maybe I, just, maybe I just need to do me for a while. You know what I'm saying? That's the kind of stuff that get people, though. And I, I know people, and I know people, man, anointed people that God was using them for a season. But then the test came, you know what I'm saying, and, and it, it, it knocked the wind out of them. You know what I'm saying? It knocked the wind out of them and, and they backslid and, 
ain't came back to God yet. You know what I'm saying? I, I know people, man. You know what I'm saying? That test. You know what I'm saying? But he'll let you know. If you seek in his face, he'll let you know why you being. He'll let you know that you're being tested. And you just got to keep the faith. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's people who done, you know what I'm saying, got out the way. You know what I'm saying? People who done went their own way. Because that test, you know what I'm saying? They back, I ain't going to say they backslid because of the test. Because God ain't going to make you backslide. You know what I'm saying? But they they took it, you know what I'm saying? It, God was testing them. You know what I'm saying? God was testing them. And they backslid in the test. I just put it like that. You know what I'm saying? God tested them. And I know he had some form on the other side. But during the test, they lost faith. You know what I'm saying? They got mad at God, low key. Not mad at God like, God, I hate you. But mad at God like in a, in a more subtle kind of way. Like, wow, God, you ain't came through for me. Man, I'm just going to do me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling you, I know. I know, I don't, I don't, I'm telling you. But see, I was already backslid. You know what I'm saying? But then I went through like some testing circumstances. And then I kind of got worse than what I already was. You know what I'm saying? I, I lost the car in 2010. But like I said, it was my fault. But I just, I don't know. I just had like a little, like low key, like a little bit of anger at God. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of anger at God, even though it wasn't God's fault. You know what I'm saying? I had a little bit of anger at God. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I kind of just like, man, I'm finna do me. I, I remember saying I'm in gorilla mode. You know what I'm saying? 2010, man. I lost the car like December 2010. You know what I'm saying? And I was just kind of like, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I remember getting more into the flesh and just... I remember saying I was in gorilla mode, just like, man, just whatever I got to do, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to get it, you know what I'm saying? Not not talking about the car, but just, I just felt like, kind of like God ain't going to necessarily take care of me. Like, I got to do what I got to do, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been there though, you know what I'm saying? But that's the kind of stuff that happened during the test if you don't, if you don't keep your faith up. But God's given us tools to keep our faith up, you know, the word of God, faith come by hearing, hearing by the word, word of God, you know what I'm saying, praying, spending time in prayer, praying in the Holy Ghost, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, you know what I'm saying, them the main two things, the word, prayer, and then fasting, a threefold cord is not quickly broken, you know, but I think I'm going to finish this video in about two hours, man, God did take it in another direction, because I, I got some other stuff, and I'm probably going to do it tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? I, I think I done made this thing kind of personal. This one right here. You know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, you know what I'm saying? Anybody going through a test, you if you know you, if you know you doing right by God and you going through a situation, you know what I'm saying? And you you know as far as the short term that you, you know you in a short term situation that you know it's not the long term will of God then that's how you know you're being tested. Because God is a good God. He's a good Father. If it seems like you're going without or, you know what I'm saying, something something that 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 something that you praying for and you know it's the will of God and it seems like it's being held back or held up, you know what I'm saying, somebody might need healing, you know healing is the will of God. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and it hadn't manifested yet. Keep believing God. Ain't nothing but a test. Look at Job. Job was going through some things. That's not the will of God for you to be stuck in that situation. Job had them boils all in his body. Lost his family. Lost all his possessions. That's not the will of God. So if God allows that to happen, that's just a, a short-term test. It's just something that he's allowing to happen for the moment. Because that's not his ultimate will. That's just something he's allowing you to go through for the moment. And and and, and it's a test. And when you end the test, he going he gonna to bring, you know what I'm saying? He going to show you what his will really is. You know what I'm saying? He going he gonna to restore, he, he gonna restore you. He going to, you know what I'm saying? 
He going to restore your life. He going to fix whatever was wrong. And it's going to be according to his ultimate will. Because it, it was the will of God for Job to go through that in that short term period of time. But that's not the long term will of God. Because see, some, some people believe in healing and they want it to come right then. And, and same thing with deliverance. Shoot, I went through that anxiety. I know it wasn't the will of God for me to be bound with no anxiety. You know what I'm saying? God got all these scriptures talking about peace and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to keep your mind in perfect peace. Who stayed on me and all that kind of stuff. I knew it wasn't the will of God. You know what I'm saying? For me to be going through all that anxiety for years, even though I did it to myself, but still. You know what I'm saying? When I got in Christ, I knew it wasn't the will of God for me to have anxiety, but he didn't heal me right away neither. Sometimes he leaves some things to teach you warfare. It's in Judges. Let me get that scripture. See, sometimes he want to teach you how to fight. He want to teach you how to, you know what I'm saying? David said, it's good that I've been afflicted. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. See, sometimes he'll use the test to make you stronger. You know what I'm saying? He'll use the test to purge you and purify you and humble you, cause you to be dependent on God. Cause you to lose all faith and lose all confidence in self. Deuteronomy chapter 8. He said they take them, take them through the wilderness. I got to prove you. I got to try you. I got to humble you. And then the, the scripture in Judges. He said I ain't going to deliver all the uh, na nations. Because he said he want Israel to come into the land and drive out all them nations. Right? But he said I'm not going to drive them out. Uh, uh, overnight, you know what I'm saying? He said, I'm gonna leave them there to teach you warfare. And he said, I ain't gonna drive them out all at once. Matter of fact, is uh, Exodus chapter 23, Deuteronomy chapter 7, he talk about little by little, but it was a certain scripture. Watch this now, these are the nations. Now, ultimately, it was the will of God for the Israelites to drive out all them nations, right? But because in Joshua, it talk about. The will of God was for them to drive out all them nations. Deuteronomy, God said, I'm going to drive out all these nations. I'm, I'm going to send the hornet before you to drive them out. You know what I'm saying? But Judges chapter 3 verse 1. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, to test them. Even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan. He wanted to teach them warfare. He don't want you to be weak. He wants you to be skilled in the word of righteousness, skilled with the sword of the spirit. He wants you to know how to stand on the word of God. He wants you to know spiritual warfare. He wants you to know how to bind the devil. He wants you to know how to stand against the attacks of Satan. He wants you to know how to be on the defense and be on the offense. You know what I'm saying? He wants you to know how to confess the word and believe the word and stand on the word and be full of the word and, and move in the power of the Holy Ghost. He, 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 want, he, he wants you to be able to go through something. He wants you to be able to take something. He wants you to be able to stand through something. You know what I'm saying? He don't want you to be weak. Any little wind just knock you out, knock you over. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And when, when it seems like, now now you know the ultimate will of God is for people to be healed, for people to be whole. You know what I'm saying? It's it's for people to uh to have what you need. I ain't going to necessarily say be rich and all that, but it, it's the will of God for you to have what you need. You know what I'm saying? Not suffer no lack. So if you're going through something, and you know it's not the ultimate will of God, and you know you're living the life you're supposed to live, that just means it's a test. You know what I'm saying? You know God loves you. You know God wants the best for you. And if it seems like, like you're going through a situation, you know what I'm saying, and, and God's not providing for you or God's not doing something for you, that it says it's his will for you in the word, that just means it's a test. You just got to trust God. You just got to trust God. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to stand on faith. You got to stay in the face of God. Because like I said, when you're in the test, you can get mad at God. You know what I'm saying? And then when you get mad at God, 
You know, you want to take situations into your own hands. You don't care so much about honoring God and everything that you do. You don't care so much about obeying God. You know what I'm saying? When you get mad at God and then you can lose faith. You know what I'm saying? You don't understand the test. You get weary. You get shaky. And, and you know what I'm saying? And you fall away. That, that's what he said. Uh, the parable of the sower. You know what I'm saying? Said when afflictions and trials come, they fall away. They endure for a while, but then they fall away. When persecution or affliction, trials and tests come on behalf of the word, you know what I'm saying? They fall away. You know what I'm saying? So like I say, you know, God can save you in a test when you get shaky. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes people fall away during the test and they want to take things into their own hands and that really just exposed what was already in them. They still had a, a rebellious root in them. They still, they still had a rebellious nature that wasn't crucified. Because, see, when you totally surrendered to God, hey, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You know what I'm saying? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait all the days of my appointed time till my change come. You know what I'm saying? He's going to perform that thing that is appointed for me. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Ain't no way out the test. Ain't no way but to go through when you totally committed to God. You know what I'm saying? But when you still got flesh, you get mad because you don't understand. You get mad because God ain't moving as fast as you want him to move. You know what I'm saying? You get mad. You get weak in faith. And, and you be ready to, you know what I'm saying? You be ready to take things into your own hands. Or you, you, get, you get ready to trust in something that's not of God. I'm telling you, man, some people single want a spouse, and that's their test. You know it's the will of God for you to have a family and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But he ain't sending it as quick as you want it. You, you being tested. It ain't the will of God for you to be lonely all your life, you know what I'm saying? But you being tested. Are you going to trust God and, and, and stay committed to Christ? Or are you going to take it in your own hands and start fornicating and, and all that kind of stuff? You going to go out on your own. Try to find you somebody. Or you're going to wait on God. You know what I'm saying? Or, you, or you're going to get mad at God and, and, and do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Instead of waiting for God to confirm that that person is right. Instead of waiting on God to bring you the right one. You're going to take it in your own hands. Because God didn't move as fast as you wanted him to. You, you low-key got mad at God. Or you just lost faith. And said, God ain't going to do it for me. I got to do it myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You lost faith? Yeah. It's real, man. Pass the test, though, man. You'll come out as pure gold. You know what I'm saying? It's real out here, man. You know what I'm saying? It's real out here. You know what I'm saying? God is good. You know what I'm saying? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, the root and the offspring of David. You know what I'm saying? God bless you.